Right, so you took everything out of the box and you want to put your FTM 300 together. So let's do one thing at a time. So let's turn it off. I have been testing it, let's turn it off. First thing we need to do is let's collect, connect our microphone. So to do that, let's just take this one out for now. This is the one for the head unit. So microphone, very simple. It's the right hand connector. The tab is at the bottom and you just pull, push the tab up and it just pull, comes out and it just clips in. Remember the tab is at the bottom and the microphone is on the right. Now you want your head unit, but that's your mic. A very nice microphone. You can control virtually everything using this microphone. I love this microphone. And it's got programmable buttons as well. Next thing is you have a, you, in the box comes a very long cable with what I would call it the head unit. So the head unit, uh, again, it's like a, it's a bigger RJ45 type connector. And again, but this time the tab, it, yeah, the tab is at the bottom again and just push it in and, and clip it in there. You want to hear that click really. Anyway, mine's in, so that's that set. We then need to connect the power cable. So just connect that and then just push them together. The tab is at the top. And then you want at least, I would say, 20 amp power supply. You know, get a decent one. Um, plus and minus, of course, this is all fused already. So the next thing is to connect the head unit. If we look at my head unit, we've already put it on the stand. I'll just take it off. So just, there you go. It just should be a Phillips, but it's not tight. Now this bracket does come with, with the 300. You don't have to buy it extra. They're quite expensive if you lose them. So take that screw out. And then the head unit, there's the connector. And it just, the clip is upwards and just clip it in like that. You want to hear it clip and then it is at this point you can use a shorter cable and then you can clip it on the front of the actual head unit it lit see these two little grooves see if i can focus a bit better a couple of grooves here they latch here there's two two more grooves there on the head unit let's just zoom in and show you them Like so, not the clearest thing, is it? So anyway, two little plastic bits there, I think, that stick out there, okay? And all you do is get your unit and just it just goes in like so and then clip. You can literally clip it and there's a retractable clip here. See it, sort of push it. And it just push and it clips into place. But I've chosen to have it separate, that's how I prefer it. So you just get your stand. Try not to scratch the radio. Probably, I'm trying to think if, yeah, the cable really should go un, over the stand, I would say. And then just screw it in. And you can go up and down with the, before you fully tighten it. There is like a spring washer there. Um, you can get, get it to the height you like. And I would, the angle, because obviously it sits at a certain angle. So that's the angle I was just sitting at. If you want to bend it back a bit, which is very easy, but I do, don't do it when it's connected to the radio. Take it off, bend it to where you want it, then put it on, because you don't want to um, break. You know, so ultimately it's plastic. So we've got our separate head unit, nice loud speaker there for the FTM 300. Remember it's GPS, APRS, built-in Bluetooth. It's just fantastic radio. The voice synthesizer, I think it's the F SV2 unit is you have to buy that separate and you just clip it inside. So we're not going to turn it on yet, plus minus that. I'm just going to look at it from the back. So at the back I'm just using a rubber duck. It is a PL259. It's not an N-type on this particular radio. Get yourself a collinear, and I recommend you get a tri-band collinear for two meters, 70, and uh, and six meters. That's what I would get, because then you can, even though this won't transmit on six, it will receive, and that'll be quite nice. So there's a the head unit there, so quite simple. And just to show you the connectors you have got at the back here. Get these cables out of the way. My BNC connector there, so 
zoom in. So you've got the capability here for two separate speakers, speaker one, sorry, speaker A and speaker B. Then you've got the 10 pin cable that you're gonna be using for PDM mode when you use your SCU20 cable. Uh, I think there's a new one now, it's, uh, it's probably SCU59, the kit, look it up anyway. Um, remember that Windows 11 will work with that cable, but you just have to use an older driver, but I use Windows 11 on it all the time. So you plug that in and then you do PDM mode. So that's it, we're ready to go, let's fire it up. Let's hold down the on button. No, let's turn it, turn on the power supply first. Always makes sense, always helps. Okay. Hold down the power button. And it's gonna straight away ask for our call sign. So we just turn the channel knob. And let's start selecting. So select with the channel, go M. And then whenever you use numbers, go to one, two, three. So it's, we're just going to put my call sign in for now, but you can put slash and then you can add things. I might add FTM 300 actually. So each time you've got to go back to AB to get back to letters, turning with the channel knob and then pushing it. F, try and go the quickest way. X, I'm getting better at this. B, then we'll, we will select the slash. Go to the slash and that, you can put four digits and it will work on C4FM. And without your call sign, it wouldn't work on C4FM anyway because it needs your call sign. Then you go, we're going to put in 300 for the fact that it's a FTM 300. But you could put, like my name is Andy, you could put Lee or something. 300, there you go. And then should we put in D? Why not? We've got another letter we can use and then hold down the channel knob. I'm pushing each time I select. And it will reboot. And when it comes on, look here, it'll be my call sign and 300D. And when you add your APRS details, I'm pretty sure that shows up as well. So there we are. We've uh, got the thing up and running. There's obviously loads of uh, settings you can do, but just the basics are, look, turn the channel knob here for your frequency on A and B. To select A and B, push A and B here. You can hear it announcing and talking to me because I've added the voice unit, which I recommend. They're about £30, are they? Then we can go VFO and memory mode. There's no memories in there, but VFO memory on A or B. And just remember, the, the microphone, you can enter the frequency look. And lots of the set settings are on here. Um, I don't know what they are offhand because, you know, they're A, B, C, D, then you've got star, you've got programmer. There's a lot of settings there that you can do on the microphone. And then lastly for now, I'll just show you how to change the mode, you know, like AM, FM, digital, narrow. So just use the D button for that. Just push it once, look, we're in DN. The line means it will be in AMS mode and it will automatically select whether if it receives an FM analog signal it will switch for you but if there's no line it will hold it on that regardless then you've got FM DN oh yeah you have to go into the menu to, to make it do voice wide but I've never seen anyone use voice wide on an FTM 300 and you've got two lots of menus you've got the short press menu like so APRS, look at the voice unit menu as well. Entering it, you can actually manually enter a frequency by pushing the channel. And then look, you can select it with this. Just go to function, push the channel knob. And look at all this, you can change your power, keep it as low as you can get away with squelch, tone, DTMF memory, because it um, you can sort of preset the DTMF. Log list. Go back. Now, if you hold, go back all the way and hold down this, look at all this. Display, TX, RX. The main one you'll use when you're doing your memory channels will be signaling and config. But there's loads. And obviously, APRS menu is going to be extensive. That's a completely separate video altogether. 
SD card cloning, you know, for using software to program this radio, RT systems, I've got, I'm going to do a video on RT systems, call sign entering, which we've done, push the channel knob, but there's our call sign back, scan functions, group mode functions, that's an interesting one, we're not, we're not in digital, but group mode, and where you can actually send people messages and photographs and let them know where you are, it's telling us there's an SD card in, because I've already put one in, remember you format it, it's telling me my, my volt is 15 volts, so I can lower that a bit on my power supply, just done that there, just lower the little volume thing, so I should be around 13.8. So I think that's that's it for now. It's just a sort of let's get this thing up and running video um, and um, see if I can just type in my, my nine node, which is four, three, four, five, five, zero. There you go. We've got an antenna connected, FM. So we, if I just see if I can trigger my node, and then you'll hear it. It's a nice, very loud speaker. There's some activity there, but no talking. Just need someone to talk. So we, we need a tone for that, so we could go to talk with my node. Let's see if I can uh, get my tone on there. Was there a shortcut for that? Um, back, I'm sure there was. You just push F, then you go to down with the channel knob to the, make it red and then push it, function, squelch type. You want to highlight it in red, push the channel, and we do want tone, that'll do, and then we just want a frequency of, nine, I think it's 90, no, it's 77, so push the channel and change it back to 77, and hopefully just hold it down, and just go back. Now it's showing us tone 77. I'm going to do a quick audio check on Hub now. Mike Zero, Fox X Ray Bravo, calling for an audio check. And here it beat back at me. Normally very helpful. Audio sounds fine, but you're bringing a buzzing with you there, uh, MJS 20 CDX. Yeah, hi Paul, good to catch you. Yeah, I'll, I'll give my uh, my node a little kick. That's what normally cures it. And uh, yeah, I'm just testing out an FTM 300D. And I've been playing around with the 991A, which I heard you talking about the other day. Uh, back to you, Paul. Hope you're well. And then I'll, I'll stand by M0FXB. Yeah, that's fine. M0 FXB returning. No, they're brilliant to operate. I actually was looking to get a 710, which is like the ICOM 7300 equivalent. Um, but then I, I thought, do you know what? I don't actually hardly ever use HF. Uh, I'm always on digital. So I stopped myself and I found a second hand one. It was around £800. It was brand new, mint condition. And I'm enjoying every minute of it. And it's so easy to use. If you bought your 7300 second hand, then you're going to sell it easily anyway. Uh, they still sell very well because they're good sets. And then you just buy another second hand 9918. I think you'd like it because you're quite into digital. You'd be on it a lot with on even on Hubnet. Um, and um, that's the main thing. You, brand new. They're about the same price, Paul. Back to you. Right. Well, thanks for the chat. Catch you on air. 73.